Yes, I know I haven't shaved in a few days, and no, I don't care. I mean, hey, we're just starting to dig ourselves out from Snowpocalypse 2019 here, okay? So uh, give me a break. I think I've earned the right to uh, let the fuzz flag fly for a bit, all right? Uh, but if it bothers you that much, I invite you to go tell somebody who gives a flying f one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, it has been one hell of a week. Um, I think that's uh, the understatement of the year, basically. Uh, yeah, it's uh, this is the first video that I have recorded since Snowpocalypse 2019, so uh, after the chaos and drama and craziness of that week, I think I deserve to uh, do something, a video that's fun, doesn't take a lot of effort or planning, and uh, that's what I'm going to do, and that means bargain bag. Yes, this is one of my favorite videos to do every month. It's quickly turned into a favorite uh, regular uh, feature of my channel here. And for those of you who might be newcomers, Bargain Bag is basically I take two of the CD mystery grab bags that I get from my local store, Skips Records and CD World, in Eugene, Oregon. If you're ever west of the Cascades in Oregon, you got to take the time to visit Skips in Eugene. It's a great store if you love music stores. Anyway, uh, yeah, I take two of these seven CD mystery grab bags and open them on camera. Uh, I, of course, with them being mystery grab bags, I don't know what's inside them, obviously. Uh, but in between each of those two bags, I review a random CD that uh, I found or that you might be likely to find in a bargain bin somewhere. Uh, but yeah, uh, first of all, before I get to the new grab bags, I'll quickly review what I found in the last two grab bags. Uh, most of it, uh, as was the case with the first pair of bags, is very unremarkable. Rob Drabkin was basically a uh, singer-songwriter, kind of a post-alternative, quasi-semi-grunge sort of thing. As I said, pretty forgettable. Um, you know, nothing, nothing much there. Swing and Dance Party. This was false advertising. This was just not swinging at all. Sorry. Uh, and the curious thing about this was... Um, it had a lot of samples from really well-known songs. I mean, the first track, Jack Hits the Road. Yes, it has samples from Ray Charles' song, Hit the Road Jack, which I'm pretty sure they didn't pay for uh, the, the uh, royalties or the uh, the rights to use, because this is a very indie uh, label. Moist Music is the label name of the label. Uh, but yes, yeah, kind of cheesy, very low-budget sounding electronic dance remix kind of stuff. And then we have uh, Windy here. I was actually looking forward to hearing this one uh, partly because it was on, or supposedly on, Mercury Records, as you can see here on the uh, cover. Uh, but it turns out to have been quite possibly the cheesiest sounding music I have ever heard in my life. And I have listened to a lot of music, trust me. And the more that I looked at the, the liner notes and the cover art and all this stuff, the more I'm doubting the legitimacy of this uh, CD, at least being on the Mercury label, supposedly, because it is it looks like incredibly cheap and low-budget design, uh, graphic design, for something that's supposedly on a major label. But uh, yeah, this is uh, a curiosity, possibly even more so after listening to it than before, which is which is a feat in and of itself, I'll grant you. Uh, anyway, uh, Valiance, this was metal, as I kind of pre predicted it was, and uh, actually a friend of mine uh, apparently looked it up probably before, you know, after he watched the video, bef but before I listened to this, and he looked up the band name and uh, discovered that it was metal. So, But uh, as with hip-hop, which I mentioned in my last Bargain Bag video, the, the review of the previous uh, CDs, I'm not enough uh, well-versed in the genre to really tell if something was well done or not well done as is the case with metal. So, uh, but I think I'll send this to a friend of mine. He's he's into metal, so he might like it. Who knows? And then uh, this tribute to Kate Bush was just plain meh. You know, just yeah. I don't know. I just like there's really nothing to say about this. I mean, I've I've never been particularly a fan of Kate Bush, not for any particular reason. Just never really investigated her stuff. And yeah, that CD. Really. Uh, this one, Shilladog is I guess how you pronounce it, and uh, it should have occurred to me when I read the name of the group 
This is actually um, Irish rock. It's you know it's a very Irish sounding rock, but to a, if you like Irish flavored rock, give it a try. Why not? And this was a very uh, dub and remix compilation CD. Quite unremarkable to me, and I like some EDM and uh, dance type music. But yeah, this was another one that was just, it did not tickle my fancy at all, really. Um, I'm guessing this is pronounced Elevator. And this was, you know, kind of a basic uh, indie rock type of stuff. I've got a friend who might like this. I'll probably just, you know, since the CD cost me, what, what did I figure, 40 some cents? Seven CDs for $2.99. I'll probably just throw this into the uh, small package of CDs that I've got for him. He might, who knows, he might like it. He might think it's crap, too, but who knows? Uh, and then we get into the ones that I've decided to keep, pretty much. Uh, ben Folds, we all know who, who Ben Folds is. I have not really listened to much of his stuff, but I don't know why, because I have a feeling I would like more of his stuff. And this is pretty good. This was a promotional single, uh, You Don't Know Me, featuring Regina Spector. And uh, yeah, I'm persuaded to hang on to this one, I'm, and I'm most likely going to investigate Ben Folds further. And then Beastie Boys, the CD single for Intergalactic, you know, might as well. Again, they're not a huge favorite of mine, but and, and I'm not a fan of uh, hip hop in general, but there's just something about the Beastie Boys, you know? I just, I can't really put my finger on it. I just, there's just something I like about them. I don't know. And then we have uh, Sweetness by the, this group Funland. It's, well, it's an, I suppose it's an album. It's more like an EP. It's only seven tracks, but this was kind of fun. It was kind of grunge, basically, because 1993, that was basically the, the, uh, golden age of grunge, I guess you'd say, but with some whimsy and some humor in it. So grunge light, I guess you'd say. But uh, it was kind of fun. And the uh, track seven, uh, it's called Obligatory Cover for the Kitties. It's actually a medley of two Air Supply songs. And, uh, you know, being an 80s kid, Air Supply is kind of a, a not so guilty pleasure for mine growing up. So uh, that was, it was kind of fun to hear Air Supply done in a an interesting style. So, uh, yeah, that was definitely a, uh, that's a keeper, I think. And I think that's the only, that might be the only album that uh, Funland ever did. Uh, at least as far as I can tell now, I'll have to dig, do a little bit deeper digging. And then a couple of jazz CDs that were in this package that I ended up really enjoying. Uh, Saltman Knowles, they are a, uh, basically a small jazz combo, you know, piano, bass, drums. Um, and they do mostly vocal. Uh, I think more more songs are vocal than are than are instrumental, with a uh, female vocalist named Lori Williams Chisholm, who's uh, very good at what she does. And so yeah, it's very cool, kind of a torchy uh, nightclub style jazz stuff. It's pretty good. And then we have Mark Maxwell, and uh, he's a jazz saxophonist, as you can see, kind of a smooth jazz style. But this uh, album is full of covers of love songs and ballads from the last several decades. I mean, he covers I Can't Make You Love Me, which is a Bonnie Raitt song. Does a good job on that. And Tears in Heaven, which is an Eric Clapton song. So, I mean, he kind of runs the gamut, as well as uh, You've Got a Friend by Carole King. He does that one. And I Love Her, which is a Burt Backrack song. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just got nice a nice mix of stuff on here and pretty really well done. You know, nothing remarkable. It doesn't really add anything new to the smooth jazz landscape, but I enjoyed it. So yeah, there were, uh, I wouldn't say more winners than losers in this pair of grab bags, but uh, there were more winners than there were in the first pair of grab bags. So uh, hey, if the average starts going up like this, I might be finding some real gems in this pair of bags. Huh? Speaking of which, let's dig in, shall we? Let's do the first bag here. Um, it is, as you can see, sealed with staples. I am opening it on camera, live in, well, live such as it is. I uh, don't know what's in here until this very moment. Let's take a look at what's the first thing here. Show Off. It is appears to be a rock band, I would guess. 1999 Maverick Records. So yeah, it's a, it looks like a rock band. So yeah, might as well give them a try. Show Off. And I'm, I'm kind of fans of those little, those groups that only put out maybe one album and were never really well known. It's just kind of, you know, I've always kind of rooted for the underdog in various aspects of life and stuff. So, you know, and, and with my history of finding weird stuff in unlikely places when it comes to music. So I'm always kind of interested to listen to these CDs that I've never heard of. So, uh, yeah. 
interesting to hear what that one is. Then we have, interesting, McDermott Galt, Waiting for the Rainbow. The artist and title are on a decal on the front, as you can see, so apparently uh, not on the cover. Kilmarnock Records. That definitely sounds Irish. So, uh, oh, Galt McDermott, New Pulse Jazz Band, Waiting for the Limo. Yeah, New Pulse Jazz Band, it says on there. I'll definitely give jazz a try. I'm never afraid to hear that. Then, Elena Powell and the Glitter... I can't read what the last word is, because the price tag's covering it up on one side and the label's on the spine. Elena Powell and the Glitter Folk, Left of the Moon. Okay. An interesting expression she has on her face in the cover, if you can see it here. She looks... She looks troubled. But, uh, yeah. Definitely give that one a try, why not? And we have... The Golden Republic. Why does they? Why does that sound familiar? Interesting. Give that one a try. It uh, looks like rock. Oh, it's um, Astral Works Records. Definitely give that one a try. Uh, it looks like self-titled. The Golden Republic. Yeah. Finding some interesting stuff here. I love doing these grab bags, I tell you. You never know what you're going to find. And we have Gladys Patches. I have no idea who these guys are. They look like a goth metal, possibly, group. Uh, you can see the vaguely emo-ish uh, stylings of the band. 2001 is the copyright date, so uh, yeah. As I say periodically, especially on these grab bag segments, I'm never, never afraid to listen to anything. And we have, oh, voice boxing. And it's on GRP, which is a jazz label. Okay, I'm really eager, eager to hear this. Interesting. Associate producer Carl, Carl Griffin. Executive producers Dave Grusin and Larry Rosen. Well, they were the founders of the label, so that makes sense. But yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing that one. Definitely. And then the last one in this grab bag. The Borrowers. Interesting. Possibly a rock group. Actually, they kind of remind me of uh, Smashing Pumpkins, purely by the what they look like on the album cover, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, 1996 Guardian Records. 96? Post-grunge, maybe? But, uh, yeah. Anyway, that is it for the first grab bag. Uh, now let's take a look at the CD that I'm going to review today. I've honestly had this one for so long, I cannot remember whether I bought it in the bargain bin or not. Uh, but since then, since I've owned the CD, I've seen it more often than not in the bargain bins of record and CD shops that I've been to. So purely by that measure, I'm going to call this a bargain bin CD. Uh, it is the self-titled debut album by Tal Backman. And he is, of course, the son of Randy Backman from the Guess Who and Backman Turner Overdrive. And yes, I'm pronouncing it Backman because according to Randy Backman, that is actually the way that the, his name, the family's name, is pronounced. Supposed to be pronounced. Apparently everybody calls him Bachman, and he's just not bothering to correct them anymore. But it is technically Backman. But anyway, yeah, Tal Backman is, uh, he's basically a alternative rock singer-songwriter kind of a thing. Uh, you know, he puts a lot of rock guitars and stuff in there, but, you know, he's definitely got a... a singer-songwriter sensibility, and I really, really enjoy this album, as if you could not tell. I've owned it for, well, it's actually going to be, it's actually 20 years old this year, 1999. So yeah, I've owned it for pretty much those entire 20 years. And one thing about him that I like is uh, he's got a bit of a raspy voice, uh, not off-puttingly so, but kind of reminds me of, I don't know, Brian Adams. So just, you know, that, that, uh, distinct characteristic of his voice. Uh, I, I just like it, so uh, I've come to enjoy his stuff. So, uh, This album was actually produced by Bob Rock, who is, uh, who is like Tal and Randy Bachman, is Canadian. And of course this album has that huge, huge hit single of his, She's So High, which has unfortunately relegated him to one-hit wonder status, unfairly in my opinion. Uh, because there's just so much more on this album to enjoy than She's So High, as good of a song as that is. I mean, it's one of the most ubiquitous songs of the 90s. 
and for good reason. It's a good song, but as I said, there's just so much more on this album to enjoy. Uh, there's a song called Strong Enough, which it kind of sound has a bit of a soul sound to it because it employs a, a Wurlitzer organ in the uh, in the melody line, which is really cool. Really cool. It gives an eye a nice touch. And uh, there's another song called You Don't Know What It's Like. It's it's kind of a rocking sound. Uh, it's got a harmonica in it, which makes it take on a kind of a bluesy sound like the Rolling Stones stuff. But as much as I like that song, there was something missing in the production that didn't take it quite far enough. Uh, maybe it needed heavier guitars or bass guitar. I think that's that might be what's missing to it. Um, and there's another, there's another, uh, there's a power ballad on here called I Wonder, which it has a great chord change up in the chorus that just gives it a real cool, an interesting character of, of its own. And another one of the rocking songs on here is called Looks Like Rain. And that one actually reminds me kind of of the Foo Fighters. And uh, I think this was uh, several years before the Foo Fighters started. I can't remember exactly when they started, but yeah, Looks Like Rain is... I think the second best song on here other than She's So High. And there are other good upbeat songs on here like Romanticide and uh, the opening song Darker Side of Blue. And there are a bunch of good ballads on here too like uh, Beside You and You Love Like Nobody Loves Me that kind of has a little bit of a blue-eyed soul uh, tinge to it. And uh, one of the, the next to last track on here is You're My Everything which it's it reminds me of a classic 70s AM radio ballad in the best way possible. So, uh, yeah, chances are you're going to see this CD in the bargain bin of a store, and if you do, pick it up and check it out. Uh, you're, you're overlooking something big, in my opinion, if you don't check this out. So, yeah, Tal Backman, self-titled debut album from 1999. So, yeah, that is the c CD in review. So uh, let's jump into the second and final grab bag of today. Let's lock the top off of it here and check it out. I try not to look inside the bag before I pull stuff out because I don't want to uh, spoil the surprise. Let's see here. Oh, Emmett Swimming. I've heard of these guys and I've never checked them out. Um, Big Night Without You. I don't know if this is their debut album or not, but uh, I will definitely check them out. Yeah. I've, I've heard about these guys. One of the few CDs in here by an artist that I've actually heard of. So, uh, yeah, got to check that one out. Oh, here we go. Waltzing Violins. Now we're talking party time here, aren't we? Uh, the 101 Strings Orchestra. Am I even going to bother listening to this, honestly? I mean, hey, if something is so, you know, low-budget bottom of the bargain bin, scraping the bottom of the bargain bin uh, chintzy, then I, I don't know, but uh, maybe I'll go ahead and check it out. And uh, Paul Wesley. There's an actor named Paul Wesley, and I'm pretty sure this is not him, although it could be. Who knows? When I Let Go. And uh, self-released, 2009. So it could be him. Who knows? Why not give it a try? It looks like indie rock or singer-songwriter stuff of a sort. Month of Sundays is the name of the band, I think, and Mosaic is the title of the album. Kind of looks like rock, angsty, sort of post grungish possibly rock. They look sullen on the back cover, don't they? Anyway, I'll give that one a try. And let's see what this one is. Live in the Northwest. Atahualpa? That's the name of the uh, band, if you can read it there. Oh, it's, uh, it's most of the song titles are Spanish. Yeah, that one's going to be too curious not to check out. And then we have Magni Wenzel vocals, uh, Roger Kellaway piano, and Niels Henning Orsted Peterson on bass. A uh, jazz or oh, um, standards. Cole Porter, Jerome Kern, Gershwin. Oh, it's Norway. The, the record label's based in Norway. Interesting. I'll check that one out. And then the final is in this bag. Making Faces by Tammy Fowler. Okay. 
And this is another self-released one. You never know what good self-released music is hiding out there, really. So, uh, yeah. There she is. Hi, Tammy. We will check this out. Um, so, yeah. Well, there you have it. Another interesting assortment of bargain bag CDs for me to check out and listen to. I enjoy this segment for some reason. I just really enjoy it. It's just kind of the the mystery. I guess we're all curious. We're a curious species, and, you know, we want to know what's inside that bag, don't we? Um, but, yeah. I, I Honestly, I could do this feature every week if I were crazy enough to do it. Uh, but anyway, oh, and I forgot to mention, if there are any of the cast-off CDs from these bargain bags that you are really interested in and you'd like to have, uh, let me know. I mean, you know, probably the best way would be to uh, uh, direct message me on Twitter. Uh, you know, just send me your address and tell me what CDs you're interested in, in. I won't make you pay for the CDs or even for postage. I'll just mail them to you. Uh, that's, that's I just love sharing music. What can I say? Uh, but anyway, yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comments, suggestions, requests, constructive criticisms, any or all of the above, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general, I encourage the feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Also, please be sure to subscribe as well. I'd love to have you as a subscriber and check out all my past videos to see what you might have missed. Plus, I invite you to check out my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are all linked to in my description below. They're all very much worth your time. They wouldn't be in that list if they weren't. Also, I am now on Twitter, as I mentioned, and you can find the link to my Twitter feed in the description below. Please be sure to follow me there so you can enjoy my stray thoughts and random musings about music and so forth. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.